Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Hi. How y'all doing? Hello. Miriam's joined. Yay. <laughs> Hi guys. Hello. How you all doing? It's a bit of a warmer Monday in Yorkshire today, so that's good. Hello. Hi. Hello to everybody coming in. Nice to see you all. Okay, so welcome to the sixth, believe it or not, session of Gain Creative Confidence. Oh wow, hello from Turkey. Um, that's nice, that's good. Um, and yeah, this is the sixth session. We've been doing these a while now and it's been going really well. Um, just for those who don't know, who've come in new to this, I've been doing sessions um, with Psychologist Magazine on their Instagram to help people gain creative confidence and just have a go at doing something creative really with um, lots of kind of inspiration and tips but also some little challenges as well. So they've been working really well, I've had lots of things sent in so that's been really really nice. Um, great to see that people are having a go at this stuff. So yeah, that's what they've been all about. My name is Juliet and I'm from the Curious Creative Club and I set up this website um, about a year and a half ago now to combine my passion of writing, art and photography and I started blogging weekly all about creativity because I knew the well-being benefits it had for me and I really wanted to share that knowledge to other people to help them live a kind of happier more content life and just understand the power of creativity really and it's it's all about that kind of self-care arena isn't it about doing things for yourself that you really enjoy um, and I think it's just a case of finding that that little thing that you do enjoy um, on a creative basis that can really help you relax get into that kind of flow state and just really enjoy what we are meant to do as humans I believe we are meant to be creative we're you know put on this earth with this uh, fantastic brain and I think it's it's great when we use it so today it's going to be all about that devil world word I call of um, perfectionism which can kind of be the thief of creativity in my eyes um, so we're going to talk and but I know a lot of people struggle with it so we're going to talk about that today just before I start though obviously the offer with psychologists this is the most latest edition um, which I've thoroughly enjoyed I'm waiting for the next one um, the link is in the bio to the offer for that so if you want that delivered weekly to your door then head there to the bio and all the details are there okay so back to perfectionism then I just want to read out a quote that I read in an article this morning um, from Anne Lamott who's an author and she says um, perfectionism is described as the voice of the oppressor the enemy of the people and it will ruin your writing blocking inventiveness and playfulness and life force now that's obviously quite dramatic but I kind of understand where she's coming from because when when you're being creative it's all about experimenting and trying new things and if if we put too much pressure on ourselves that those have to be then perfect it's it kind of stops all that creative flow in your brain in action straight away because you're already analyzing what you're doing rather than being involved in the process so as as I said, it's it's kind of usually accompanied by fear is perfectionism in that we're so scared of getting things wrong that it can sometimes stop us in, in our tracks in the first place. You know, we, we we kind of create that internal judgment of ourselves. But I think as well, if you're doing anything creative that's visual, quite often you don't really want to hide that away. Yes, there might be some people, thank you, um, many a uh, Honda coaching I've probably said that completely wrong is saying you are 100% right oh thank you um so yeah especially if you're creating something visual you might have it in a sketchbook or something to look at but quite often you know if you've created that beautiful piece of artwork you might want to show that you might want it around your house you might want to sell it and so that opens yourself up to a whole load of um vulnerability and self-judgment and fear of judgment of others when quite often it's the opposite if if you put your work out there quite often you'll receive really nice feedback and you know it's there to be shared 
Hi there, Rachel. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, I, I apologies. I am rubbish at pronouncing names. Um, so, yeah, we, you know, we don't want to create so much fear in ourselves that we don't even begin in the first place. We don't want to create that internal judgment. It's about the process itself, enjoying that process. And then, you know, if you produce something that you're proud of, get get it out there into the world share it feel, feel proud of that achievement you know it's it takes skill and it takes observation and lots of experimenting and playing about to be able to do that in the first place so be proud of that you know be proud that you've given it a go and by all means do share share things and don't be afraid of that um judgment which is often not even there to be honest I'm I've yet to see anybody that's gone oh my god that's really bad or you know what on earth are you thinking how can you call yourself I've never seen that especially in Instagram land where you know the creatives are supported really well I think so yeah just don't be afraid of that it's also um about giving up a little bit of control which right now we're having to do anyway in this kind of world that we now live in and that might make it harder you know you might want to have some control over things that you're doing so that can kind of add to the angst when we're already living in a world where control is kind of all over the place um quite often when you're producing writing or artwork or, or any kind of creative thing you know if if you've got that kind of fear of it having to be perfect quite often you'll hold your breath you know internally in your body you will be having that kind of fear response of oh am I doing this right and it creates that anxiety and that's definitely what creativity should not be about because it's about the fun it's about playing it's about experimenting and it's if if you're feeling like that it's trying to get let go of that control and giving yourself permission to play you know we we put so many rules upon ourselves of how we should do things and that kind of relates to the next point. We create shoulds out of everything. We should be doing this better. We should be doing this right. We should be keeping the house clean. We should be providing dinner at six o'clock. We should be working really hard whilst at home, whilst looking after children, whilst also being a perfect school teacher. We should be doing all this stuff. This is the kind of internal monologue that goes on in our brains. But, you know, it. the only true thing is is what's happening right now. What is in your head creating that should is is not the truth. It's it's you creating that in your head. You're becoming your own kind of self-master when actually you don't need to be. So a real good tactic for the kind of shudders in this world, and I know there's lots of us and I do it myself. You know, I'm not immune to this stuff. I catch myself all the time, but it's becoming aware of you saying that to yourself, being aware of that should voice in your head. And a really simple technique is to just, change that word should to the word could and it changes the complete landscape of that sentence so if I say you know I should be doing this way better than I've just produced this I should be better than this now because I've been going to art club for three years I should know how to do this stuff if you change that to I could experiment with this style and have a go and see if it works out okay it just eases that pressure off instantly and makes you feel so much better about what you're doing because it's not it's not a definite thing it's um an opportunity that's that's how i see it. it's an opportunity to practice it's an opportunity to have some you time and just have that kind of time out to play and experiment and that's what it needs to be you know none of us are born like amazing artists they might be the odd few but they are very very rare we all learn this stuff in life. We, we're not experts right from day one. None of us are in anything. Um, there's, you know, certain very few people that have a real flair and will find it easier. But other than that, the rest of us are learning from day one. So don't put that pressure on yourself to be, you know, an instant best-selling artist from the first time you put that pen to paper likewise if you're a writer don't expect to pen a novel send it off and it be instantly accepted it, it, life doesn't work like that we have to practice we have to play and we have to learn you know there's so many ways to learn out there now um especially during lockdown there's been so many courses put out there so take that opportunity you know it learning doesn't mean that you're no good at it in the first place it just means that 
you can enhance those skills and you can learn new techniques on how to do things and make things easier. You know, there, there might be a very easy way of doing things that you've not tried before that just makes the light bulb go on and think, why on earth did, you know, didn't I try that before? So it really is as simple as that. Um, the other thing is, you know, if we spend all our creative time berating ourselves, it steals the joy of why we're doing it in the first place. Like I said, you know, we've got so much pressure on ourselves at the moment. If we're already, before we've even begun, berating ourselves for not being perfect at this stuff, then it steals that whole experience in the first place. It's meant to be enjoyable. It's meant to be fun. Um, and, you know, it, it becomes just another task to complete then. If, if you're not looking at it as that kind of experience, it just becomes another thing that we have to do. And that's not what it's about at all. It kind of defeats the object. The point is to take some time out, have that creative flow time, really enjoy just being observant. I've always liked to, likened it to active mindfulness. So for those who struggle with traditional kind of mindful practice um, and meditation practice where, you know, your brain might be whirring and you can't switch off. Although I know it's brilliant for you, it doesn't work for everybody. And so this kind of active mindfulness can really work where you're focusing so hard on something that you lose track of time. The hours can have gone by and you've just had a really calm enjoyable experience or it can be an invigorating experience as well like I've said before you know you could start this stuff and think wow this is amazing I want to go I want to try something else now so it it definitely takes you out of that kind of everyday head of where you've got that internal monologue going on all the time of what you could be doing or should be doing um, and it just takes you know gives you that time out to experiment have fun and play by yourself and just enjoy that experience that is what creativity is all about another way where um perfectionism can cause a lot of trouble is that you know if you're that kind of um, mindset which you know there's nothing wrong in being a perfectionist it can help you really achieve things but it can also create a lot of kind of measurement and judgment. So you've set up your own kind of measurement of standards in your head. And quite often you're trying to reach that end target. You're trying to get to that place of level of skill or to produce something that you're really proud of. But what will happen when you get there, you might feel that kind of self of um, sense of achievement for that day. But then quite often you know, you'll be on to the next thing, you'll want to set the next challenge, the next target, because you already feel like you need to improve because you've got that kind of perfectionist mindset. So then when does become, you know, the um, the perfect yardstick for reaching that level of skill, it's really hard to reach that, you'll be constantly go going for that um, level, and it it just might not work for you in terms of making you feel content, which is what this is about. It's about increasing your happiness. You'll be on to the next thing and then it kind of lessens that sense of joy of what you've just achieved, which is, again, is not what we're about. So um, the worst case of perfectionism, obviously, is it stopping you from starting in the first place. We're so frightened of getting it wrong that we don't even begin. So we definitely want to at least try and eliminate that initial fear. Yes, there might be further fear once you've started and you might, you know, you might start that um, dialogue in your head where, oh, this isn't going right, this, you know, this isn't working. But all I can say is to, to try and persevere, to try and not screw it up, throw it in the bin. Um, if it is going wrong, then just use it as a as a place to experiment with and do something else on that paper that might lead you in a different direction or the same with um, a story take some time out and then come back to it you know it's, there's nothing um, bad going to happen from playing about with this stuff nothing is going to be made public it's it's all just that kind of internal fear that we're trying to get rid of um, which brings me on to an, another example sort of in writing um, how how you kind of work and how you are um, a writer. So there's two kind of theories to this. 
there can be one theory that probably would help perfectionists in that fear of the kind of blank page. So when writing, authors often describe their kind of process as either being a planner writer or what's called a panster writer. Now, I don't know if you've heard of this before, but panster is literally flying by the seat of your pants. So if you're planning, then you're really into plotting out those key moments in, in a book, say, in a novel, and you have that kind of plan to work towards when you're writing. So if you're a perfectionist and you don't like that kind of blank page starting just from scratch and not doing anything, creating a bit of a plan and a, a bit of an um, outline can really help you feel a bit more in control and a bit more guided. Um, J.K. Rowling is a perfect example of this. She she is definitely a planner and you know, the Harry Potter series may not have worked if she hadn't done it like that because obviously she wrote many books. So it's not to say that um, planning is wrong and it can really help, like I say, it can help perfectionists in the first place to kind of guide that out. But what I would say is don't be afraid to deviate from that plan. So that's where, you know, it might become a little bit more scary, but it's a bit more about trusting your instincts, understanding where the story's going as you've written it. And if that leads off plan, then... That doesn't mean that you're failing or, you know, not not reaching your perfectionist boundaries. It's just a case of trusting your internal instincts and going going with that. So the other um, kind, like I say, is panster, which is where you literally start a story and just go with where it takes you. So the characters or the events may lead the story rather than your guiding plan or plot. Um, an example of this is Stephen King. So he distru- distrusts plot, is what he says. He believes that plotting and spontaneity of real creation aren't compatible. So that's really interesting in that he believes, you know, that kind of um, in the now moment of creativity is hampered if you kind of plan it all out in advance, um, which is an interesting way to look at it. And I know many authors are. Um, most definitely pansters and they get really into their characters get to know their characters and their situation and that guides the story so both um, are just different ways of how to approach these things but I think the planning side of things can probably be a little less scary to perfectionists so that might be some way that you start if you guide guide it all out but then like I say if the story takes over then Don't be afraid to trust your instincts and go with that. So is this all kind of making sense? I'm aware that I'm probably garbling quite a bit because I've written a lot of notes. But um, give me a thumbs up if it's making sense. So the other thing about being a pantster as well is, um, you know, you, you very much test ideas and you've got to be kind of willing to go with that story, but then also not be afraid of um, ditching. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Um, not be afraid of ditching those chapters or ideas that you might have gone down a route and it's not... Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> so it makes total sense. Thank goodness for that. I always feel like I'm just kind of talking loads on these things and then when I watch it back, I think, oh, it did make a little bit of sense, so I don't feel as bad. But when I'm talking, I never know. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, don't be afraid to scrap entire chapters and... It's quite scary when you've put all that effort and work into it. But if it's led you down a road that then you think no longer works, it has been a useful part of the process. You might not think so at the time, but it most definitely has. So this kind of brings me on to... I'm just taking over the page, sorry. The tasks we've got for today. So I've got a few tasks today because after today's session, I'm on holiday for... Oh, thank you. I'm on holiday for nearly three weeks um, on the Mondays. So I won't be joining again until the 31st of August. And I definitely didn't want you to be bored while I'm away. And I know now, having been with me for a few weeks, that you guys have got it in you because you've been sending me your stuff and that's brilliant. So I don't want to kind of stop this flow of activity and productivity. So I'm going to give you a few um, tasks today and I'm going to talk talk through them as well. So the first one is um, a kind of artistic task. And what I want you to do, and this may feel really scary, but trust me, it's really satisfying. I want you to create a piece of artwork that's done in either um, pen or black ink or coloured pen. And that is because you can't rub that out, you know. You can't sketch it out and redo it. 
you've got to trust your instincts and just go with it and what this does is create a real kind of deep sense of observation and definitely gets you in that flow because you are really concentrating and you can't possibly um really think about other things because you're that um focused and the reason i say this is because you'll be surprised at how well it goes trust me you'll think oh my goodness if i make a mistake what i'm gonna do but all i would say is this doesn't have to be a perfect replica of something it can be a sketch in your garden it can be um you know something that you've made up in your head but it doesn't have to be like an exact copying form it can be quite loose and to be honest the looser the better um, and then it just becomes part of the character and doesn't necessarily look like a huge mistake so to give you some examples of these as usual I've got some I always feel like blue Peter um so this is one that I did a while ago which is just a gin bottle with some daffodils in it and some writing up the side. I think it's soothed by nature and gin. So, you know, you'll notice this bottle is not exactly symmetrical by any means. It's a very loose drawing. Um, but it gives, to me, it gives it character. It's that kind of sketchy feel. And, you know, it's just a nice, because I've added the yellow, it's kind of a nice bright image. So that's one. This is one of my, I think this might have actually been my first ever card, you know. So this is really small one um, and it says, all things grow with love on the watering can, which I had in my garden at the time. And it was just a little sketch in my garden. And, you know, this isn't perfect by any means. This is a sign that was just hanging on the wall and then below was um, just a pot in my garden. But it's been one of my best selling cards because it's small, it's cute, it's just very simple and it's gone down really well. Another one, so this, um, and I'm kind of showing you this because I want you to understand that you literally can be creative anywhere. So my um, daughter swims um, for a local club, which means she's there every single day. We go to galas a lot. I had some things that I wanted to do for an upcoming art exhibition. I wanted to create some new cards. And I literally did four of these birds that took absolutely ages. So these are felt tip pen. You'll see with like really small patterns on and so precise. Um, I have to say, I kind of, you know, my eyes, by the end of it, I couldn't see. <laughs> um, but just doing that really intricate patterning with felt tip pen takes so much concentration it's a very you know it's a very simple drawing it's not rocket science it's not really artistic but it was so satisfying to do and be, i did one and loved it so i ended up doing four <laughs> so they're all different kinds and they're all different characters so they've become these four little birds now on the kind of group card you'll see and like i said they, they took quite a, quite a while to do um but I literally just took all my pens to my daughter's swimming session and did them at the side of the pool. And it was really good fun to do. Hi there, coming in. Anybody coming in? There's quite a few coming in, actually. Hello. Um, so, yeah, that's just an example of where I had to just trust myself and give it a go. And, you know, not one of those birds ended up being a mistake because I just really, really focused. And they're all just different characters, which is what I kind of love about them and the kind of permanence of it. Another one um, with Art Club, we each year we do a session in one of the members' gardens that's absolutely gorgeous. And um, I was kind of not in a flowery mood that day, which is very unlike me. I do a lot of flowers. But there was also some statues there of these two um, little children um, about to have a little kiss. So that was the statue there. And again, I did this straight in pen. I trusted myself to do it. I didn't do it in pencil. I just had a go and that became quite a nice, just a little black and white picture that I now have as a card as well. So it really is about trusting yourself to have a go. Um, don't be afraid of mistakes. If a line goes wrong, just think about how you can use that in a different way or a slightly looser way or just balance it up with that kind of sketchiness at the other side, if you see what I mean, so it doesn't look odd becomes part of the character of the of the piece so those are some examples of artworks so i definitely want you to have a go of that and i want you to again notice how how you feel when you did it do 
did you hold your breath while you're doing it? I quite, <laughs> I quite often find that I'm doing that. I hold my breath because I'm concentrating so hard. But you know, try and kind of breathe, <laughs> and it'd be an enjoyable experience. Um, you know, how did you find it? Would you do it again? Did you find it enjoyable, or was it really tricky? So yeah, I'd like you to have a go at that. Then the second, well, second or third task, you can do both if you wish. I want you to have a go at that kind of writing, those writing styles that we talked about. So either being a planner or a pantster. So the planning side of things, which will then kind of free up the perfectionism, I'm hoping, is to have a go at planning out a story, plotting out a story, not really detailed, but just, you know, having those kind of key points within the story. Um, I want you to write it all down and then I want you to put it away and I want you to write and I want you to deliberately let allow yourself to go off track. So I'm kind of hoping that you won't remember everything that you've written and I want you to deliberately allow yourself to go off, st- off track, allow the story to kind of take on a life of its own and, and just follow how that goes and, and know how that feels to kind of go off plan and trust your instincts and trust where the story goes. So that's the second part. If you are a panster like me, then I want you to just have a go at just starting and just take it, seeing where that story takes you. Um, it you know it can be anything, just a little nugget of an idea. You could have you know a little bit of a plan in your head, but I really want you to kind of trust in your writing, where it will take you, what characters you're popping into that story, what might they do, and that that is literally what you know, writing these kind of deeper stories and novels are about, it's letting that those characters and events take over your head and kind of becoming those people, I guess, and understanding what they would do, where would they take the direction of the story. So does that make sense? Give me a thumbs up if it does. Give me a scary face if that feels scary. I hope it doesn't. Um... <laughs> Uh, you know, this this is kind of to stretch you a little bit now because a lot of you have been with me can, for the full six weeks and I feel like, you know, you can give this a go now. Um, brilliant. Laura's saying thumbs up. Brilliant. Um, so it'd be really nice if you had a go at this stuff. We've, we've got like a three weeks break for you to have a go at all this. So there's plenty of time. What I would say on the writing side of things is try not to edit it straight away. You'll be really tempted. You'll read back and you'll be like, oh. I need to change this, I need to change that. But what I want you to do is to at least leave it a couple of days and then you can go back and have a look and edit it because the any kind of issues then will become more obvious. If you do it straight away, good. Rachel's saying sounds good to me, bro. Yay. Um, if you do it straight away, then you might not notice some things. It's always better to kind of leave it a few days and you'll pick up straight away on things. Um I'm a nightmare for trying to edit, but I try and stop myself. So I've written um, almost the full first draft of a novel now. And what I really struggle with, which I'm telling you because, you know, I'm most definitely not a perfect writer, is I accidentally slip into third person voice, which really irritates myself when I read it back. It's meant to be in first person and it stays in first person for a while. Uh, and I think this is quite a common thing I've heard it's I hope it is not just me um but you know I just happen to kind of naturally switch back into third person sometimes and when you read that back it's really frustrating now I could very easily kind of stop quarter way in and go back and really self-edit but I know that won't take, take me further in the story and I know that that will come in the second draft anyway so I really try to avoid doing that although like I say, when I read it back, it really irritates me. So I have to really make myself not do it. So I'd say I'm more of a kind of, I'm a bit of both. I have a very rough, sketchy plan at the beginning, but it's not set in stone by any means. And if the characters take it off, then I allow that to happen. On the other book that I'm writing, which is a non-fiction book, that I've found definitely does need to be more planned because there's definite things that I want to say and get across in that and not forget. So, and that's obviously um, a story and learnings that I've got all in my head are all written down somewhere anyway. So it's not things that I'm making up. It's things that I've already done or um, memories. So it's not as important to kind of just let yourself go off 
Although there are still occasions where I think, you know, while I'm writing that I might not have thought of when I've been planning and I think, oh, right, yeah, I need to put that in as well. So, you know, it still evolves, but that is more of a guided plan than I'd say a fiction book. So, yeah, I hope that makes sense. Um, So I think that's it for now on the tasks. I'd just kind of like to finish with this quote because this is what it's all about as well. And it's in the back of Psychologist magazine, actually. And it says, um, let your curiosity be greater than your fear. And it's by, and now I never know how to pronounce this name either, Pima, Pima Shodron, I think it is, who is um, a Buddhist teacher that's in the back of Psychology's magazine today. And ultimately, that's what it's about. It's it's hoping that your curiosity to do these things, to have a go, you know, that um, enthusiasm to really want to have um a go at these creative things has to eventually grow to be bigger than the fear of doing it in the first place and when that happens it'll all be way more easier and that's that's eventually where we want to get to and i think the more you do you know creativity breeds creativity and the more curious you become the more you're going to want to do this stuff in the first place anyway and then that fear will gradually dissipate the more you do the more confident you will get and that's definitely been for me, me, you know, the case for me. When I started out, as I said, my first drawings in my eyes were horrendous, but I recognised were, a, you know, a step in the right direction. And, I, you know, it's taken me three years, but I've practised a lot and I'm now at a place where, you know, I'm happy with how things are going and I feel like I've developed as an artist and as a writer. So you will get there too. It might not take that long. You might do it way more than me. And, you know, you might get there sooner. But I hope that you understand that the process is what it's all about as well. And it's always practice makes progress, not perfection. Always remember that practice makes progress, not perfection. So, yeah, I hope that's been useful. I hope you've enjoyed the last six weeks, those ones that have been there since the beginning. I hope you've enjoyed the challenges. Please do keep sending them through to me because I really love seeing them and I do share them on my stories or on my Facebook page. So yeah, do that. Or share on Psychologist Connected Communities as well. We're trying to kind of build a little bit of a community around that. So, and I love love seeing your work and kind of the story behind it. It's really like last week was the guided words and a few of you have sent through your guiding words and explained why you've chosen those ones, which has been really nice. The previous challenges, are, they're all on um, Inst- Psychology's Instagram anyway. The lives have, are still on the um, feed of those. So if you go back, you'll see them there. They're all, the videos are also on Psychology's TV um, under the Better You section. So that's it's almost like a YouTube link, I think. So yeah, you can find them there as well. I've written about them quite often in my blogs, which leads me to the blog. So each week I normally blog about some aspect of creativity and while I've been doing this I've been kind of popping some of the challenges in there or adding the links into the live so you will see them in there as well. Um, So yeah by all means for those that haven't been here for all, all the time pop back and have a look. You know if you're into this stuff there's lots of challenges and tips and hopefully the people on here will um test testament to the challenges that that they have worked and they have encouraged them so hopefully um if you pop back you you know you'll get into them as well there's been lots of different ones there's all kinds of different things so hopefully you'll find some that appeal to you my next session will be on the 31st of august i am going for a very much needed holiday after you know those of you who don't know i started um chemo last november and had six months of that so i am most definitely ready for a holiday that's all done with now so I can go away which is going to be brilliant and it also feeds your creative creativity massively when you go on adventures and see new places which I've said before so hopefully I'll come back even more ready for action and doing some more creative challenges so thank you to everybody that's been here thanks for following and sharing i've really appreciated it and i've loved doing it with psychologists thank you to them too don't forget the latest offer is in the bio and the blog today is all about um whispers in the universe which sounds a bit woo but it's all from 
um, listening to Oprah Winfrey's podcast last week, who I'm a big fan of. And yeah, that's what it's about today. So have a look, see if that um, floats your boat. Hopefully it will. There's many more blogs on there to keep you going throughout the summer as well. And yeah, thank you very much for joining me. I've really enjoyed it so far and I'll see you back on the 31st of August for more. And in the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this one that I've set today and please do send me anything that you um, have managed to do and also just any feedback generally on the sessions, anything you want to hear more about or things that could be improved. I'm always open to feedback, so thank you very much. And yeah, have a good rest of your week and I will see you soon. Bye, take care, bye.